on behalf of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, express our extreme uh, gratitude for the work that was done in this project and uh, the really solid outcomes that have come out of it in terms of the case studies that were identified and uh, the really high quality book that's come out and uh, the video presentations, etc. I have been associated with this project from the beginning, but I read the book cover to cover flying in last night and uh, I was just amazed by the quality of the output and the quality of the case studies. Um, it made me feel nostal nostalgic for my days in the CGIAR when we were out there and actually doing this stuff. So it's, it's a great outcome. Let me thank uh, Raju, David, uh, also Klaus, Kenda, and Sivan, wherever Sivan is, Sivan, for just being such a great team. And from our side, I want to thank Ellen McCullough. She was the program officer in charge of this project. Um, running grants is our business, but occasionally there are grants that actually get you really excited. And I know that Ellen was really excited about this project for a long time. And I wonder tomorrow what will be an exciting thing on her plate after this is finished. Um, let me say a few things about why we in the foundation decided to, to work in this project. Um, as most of you know, uh, we started a program on agriculture development about three years ago. And three years ago, when we started to work in this area, we were motivated by the fact that, that agriculture is a proven engine of uh, economic growth. And that wherever countries have progressed out of destitution and poverty, they've done it through first starting with improving their agriculture sector. And the contribution of agriculture to poverty reduction, to hunger reduction, is absolutely clear. Yet, despite the proven successes, we felt that there was such little attention being paid to the agriculture sector in the developing world, and that there was such little donor interest in investing in agriculture. And so that was a puzzle that has been with us right from the start. And one of the reasons we wanted to do this work was to say, can we reinvigorate a sense of enthusiasm in investment in agriculture? Can we create a set of quintessential success stories that will get people to understand the importance of investment in agriculture and get the community back into investing in agriculture? Not just the the international donor community, but also national governments, local governments, NGOs, civil society organizations, etc. So that, that was the reason why we pushed to, to move forward on this project. And we learned a lot from uh, a project that took place before this, which was a project called Million Saved, which brought success stories in health out to the global community. Is it the same way as this project is bringing um, success stories in agriculture to the global community. We're really excited about this and we look forward to using this book and everything else that comes out of this project as major advocacy tools in our efforts to look at um, getting more support for agriculture in the development process. And this is a great time. This is a great time because suddenly agriculture is back on the agenda and everybody is talking about the importance of agriculture. The G20 has put $22 billion into smallholder agriculture development activities. There's a big World Food Summit taking place in Rome next week and Joachim von Braun just told me that he's going there and he's going to present the millions fed work, etc. And Joachim, I'm sure you'll get a, a great reception there from, from the results that you'll be presenting. And this is a good time because when people meet in Rome, they're going to be saying, why are we interested in agriculture? They're going to talk about 
the billions of people who are starving, they're going to talk about low productivity in agriculture, etc. They'll spend a lot of time on the why. What this book does, it says how. How can you get beyond that? How can you create solutions to those problems? And I think that's the most important contribution that this book will make to the global community. Um, let me reflect a few things about what it means to us um, in the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, we, we've been learning as we go about agriculture development and what works and what doesn't work, etc. And, and these stories give us tried and tested paradigms, models, and experiences that we can build upon and that we can work with. It shows us ways in which ideas can go to scale and how going to scale has impact. And I think those are useful models for us to look at and learn from. It also tells us that investing in science and technology is absolutely crucial, but it's not adequate, it's not sufficient. In addition to investing in science and technology, we need to be looking more holistically at the infrastructure requirements for getting inputs into the field, getting outputs outside the field, getting the extension systems, getting the credit systems, etc. We need to have all of the market-related infrastructure in place. We need to have the institutions in place, institutions for accessing land, accessing water, accessing information, etc. And we need to have the incentive systems in place so that farmers can use the productivity growth in order to improve their own lives and improve their livelihoods. And they have an incentive for doing so. Price policy, trade policy, etc. These are crucial. So as we look at our own business, these case studies provide really solid examples of the absolute need for a holistic view of agriculture development. And that's a lesson we take very seriously. We take another lesson very seriously. Pretty much all of the case studies here talk about successes that have come about through investment in smallholder agriculture. Smallholder agriculture, which is predominantly women-led agriculture. And that's a, a story we take very seriously. We take investing in smallholder women-based agriculture systems very, very seriously in the foundation. And this, the case studies here endorse that commitment we have already. The third lesson we've learned from here is that in the end, it's the communities that matter. We can do everything to provide all of the necessary components of technologies that need to be in place, but you need the ownership at the community level. At the local community level, the regional, the national levels. And unless you have the community ownership, you're not going to see the change taking place. And that's something that comes out very strikingly, something we, we take seriously as we look ahead. I think the fourth lesson that comes out is international public good agriculture research is absolutely crucial for all of the work we are doing. And international public good agriculture research uh, has made enormous difference. Look at the story on wheat rice, look at the story of wheat trust, look at the story on the Green Revolution, look at the story around the cassava mealy bug. All of these were based on solid uh, public sector, international public sector research, public good research. But all of these stories imply long-term donor commitment for international agriculture research long-term donor commitment for international agriculture research has become extremely scarce these days. But that's what we need to bring back as we look to the, the future. I'm not going to keep talking. I'll stop at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the, the next thing we've learned is all of these case studies show us that we have to take a risk. 
we um, in the donor community have to take a risk and people on the ground need to take a risk if you want to make a difference. None of these projects started off by knowing what the answer was going to be. But if people were not willing to take the risk, you would not have come up with the solutions. And we need to get better at taking those risks. And I think that's something we take back from here also. Let me make a final comment. The final comment I want to make is, despite all the successes, as um, Raul and Rajul mentioned, we still have a, a billion people who are hungry, and we have more than a billion and a half people who are living under a dollar a day. And we are now back to the point of saying, agriculture can make a difference to these people. This book, I hope, provides the examples and the enthusiasm for putting agriculture back on the agenda in the, in the hope that it will make a huge difference in terms of the number of hungry and the number of poor. And I hope we can come back a few years from now and commission another book which will celebrate our successes, our joint successes, in sharply reducing those billions of people who are hungry. Let me take, finally, this opportunity to thank Joachim von Braun for the enormous leadership he has shown in this project, but the enormous leadership he's shown for IFPRI as a whole and for the food policy community globally.